Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar, Better Managed Traffic with Siemens Tactics. My name is Connor and I'll be your moderator. Before we get going on the webinar today, just a few quick housekeeping things to run through. All phone lines are muted, so if you have any questions, please use the chat feature. Presentation will run about 40 minutes or so, which will give us some time to answer questions at the end. By attending today's webinar, you are eligible to earn TARP, point, TARP points through IMSA. For those of you who provided your IMSA number during the registration process, Western Systems will go ahead and handle that submission for you. If you like a copy of today's slides, they are available for download within the GoToWebinar toolbar under the handout icon. And lastly, today's webinar will be made available um, for you to view at any time on demand. You'll get an email tomorrow to do so. All right, with the housekeeping out of the way, I'm excited to introduce today's presenters, Kai Antrim, Territory Manager, and John Brannon, Director of Service at Western Systems. Guys, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, Connor. And uh, thank you all for uh, tuning in again for uh, this, uh, this edition of our webinar series. Um, I'm sure we've got some uh, repeat viewers, but also some, some new viewers. So for those of you who are new with us today, uh, we've, we're trying to keep in touch with our customers uh, through what would uh, uh, historically have been non-traditional means with a lot more webinars, phone calls, uh, remote technical support. I think it's preparing us for uh, you know, more flexibility in the future, but at the same time, it's uh, an opportunity to uh, stay in touch with people, have you guys earn some TARP points, so we, we certainly appreciate you uh, tuning in. Um, hope nobody minds today. I'm uh, wearing my hat, just like all of you, uh, probably. I'm on six or seven weeks without a haircut, so um, if that's the worst thing that happens to me in these uh, this couple month period here, or however long it lasts, is that I really, really badly need a haircut at the end, I will uh, consider myself lucky to have come out and unscathed. So, in all seriousness, we hope that you guys are staying uh, happy and healthy and uh, and uh, you know getting enjoying the additional time with uh, family. And uh, for those of us who are used to being on the road, it's uh, definitely an interesting change uh, being uh, being stuck in the office. But uh, a little bit about uh, about us at Western Systems, we are still uh, open for business. Uh, we've separated out uh, our manufacturing into a couple different shifts. Outside of our manufacturing, um, we do have the ability to work remotely pretty effectively. So it really hasn't changed our operations at all. We are open to business. And, you know, I've actually heard some chatter around uh, the industry that some, uh, some other companies um, that, are, that are subject to, to supply chains in other countries and uh, different uh, regulations and handlings of the, uh, the COVID-19 situation have actually been shut down. So we're happy to say that, uh, knock on wood, we haven't actually experienced uh, any slowdown in our in our supply chains, and uh, we're looking forward to being out there to uh, support you guys. So, uh, with that said, um, again, a little background on Western Systems. Uh, we've been around since 2001, so we're pushing our 20-year reunion. Uh, about six, seven years ago, we moved into a new headquarters uh, in Everett, Washington. So we've grown from a five-person operation to 45 employees, and uh, we're in a 30,000 square foot manufacturing building. Um, for those of us who uh, aren't familiar, at the, at the very beginning, we were mostly just making uh, traffic signal cabinets for, for the state of Washington, but we've expanded our product offerings to include uh, everything you might need out at an intersection. So um, at our facility, we have in-house TMC Operations Center. This is a great uh, place for us to showcase some of our equipment, but also um, be able to uh, VPN into uh, uh, no matter where we are uh, throughout our territory to help help uh, support our customers and show them some of the latest and greatest uh, uh, equipment and how to use some of the stuff. Um, we're the largest traffic manufacturer and dealer in the Pacific Northwest. And today we've got uh, operations in Washington, Idaho, Montana, uh, Alaska, and California. So our core business units, uh, uh, mostly we're gonna talk today about Siemens, um, Siemens uh, tactics. As you guys may have heard from us, we've got uh, the entire uh, Siemens line from, from local controller software and hardware all the way up to kind of a tactics uh, enterprise systems and, and, and concert systems and connected vehicles, anything that you guys might need for the ITS space. Another thing I should add, we've got uh, John Brannon, who's our director of technical services on the line. Uh, the technicians have been keeping pretty busy because uh, uh, despite the fact that there's a lot less cars out on the road, um, people are still calling in with uh, 
with uh, questions and issues and uh, and we're there to support them. So we've got technicians uh, scattered throughout our territory and their lines are uh, available and, and, and they're willing to help. So um, I am hoping uh, in the past, uh, done a lot of just uh, talking through some of these slides, but uh, we do have an opportunity today. If you guys want to get more specific uh, into something, I encourage you to use that chat feature and, uh, and uh, Ping in a question. John's uh, on the line here, and he'll be monitoring closely for for anything that he might uh, be able to add or uh, any technical questions you might be able to answer. Part of the purpose of this is to kind of whet your guys' appetite. This is a high-level overview of, of of the Siemens Tactic System, but what we'd like uh, to do is generate some some ideas, generate some uh, levels of interest in some of the different features, and then be able to follow up with you guys on um, something specific you might have heard today that you'd like to hear a little bit more on. Um, it's, uh, it takes us a little bit longer to mobilize to actually, you know, drive out to your, uh, your place of business, um, you know, when, when times are, when times are, uh, you know, more of a normal, but, uh, right now we're able to respond pretty quickly, uh, uh, via these go-to meetings and go-to webinars. So please reach out to your territory manager, reach out to John Brandon or somebody from his technical team. And if there's anything that, uh, interests you, um, uh, we'd, we'd be happy to dive in a little bit further. So today, it's going to be a little bit of a precursor. Um, in the next month, keep your eye out for, um, for those of you who are Siemens users, you've uh, become accustomed to us somewhat regularly having Siemens user groups, where we actually uh, sit down with controllers and go on site with you guys and walk you through some of the features and, uh, and how-to processes for some of the things that uh, our controller and central system are able to do. We still plan to do that, but we're going to do that remotely. And um, we'd like uh, uh, for, throughout the next couple of weeks for you guys to reach out to us with uh, ideas you might have or things that you'd like to focus on. Just like most of the things in our business, um, our ability to provide you guys what you need uh, in big part comes from uh, contributions from you guys who, who see these things day in and day out. You know the, the pain points that you have at each of your agencies, and uh, we really do uh, appreciate that input to help us uh, produce a better product for you guys. So tactics, uh, tactics is the central system. Uh, when you're talking about uh, Siemens as a, as a modular system, you've got the actual hardware. So it's available in an M60, uh, which is the NEMA uh, ATC controller or 2070. Um, they can both run CPAC. CPAC is the local controller software that uh, resides on the controller and tactics is the central system. So this is when you uh, um, have communications to your traffic signals. Tactics is the network that's looking over all of your systems and gives you a lot of that ability to remotely manage uh, uh, manage your traffic network. It was interesting. I was uh, at the APWA last September and I had a public works engineer come up to me and he asked, yes, we have a traffic management system at our organization, but I haven't really quite figured out, um, you know, what the purpose of it is. We currently have somebody who sits in there all day long and uh, they, it appears to just be staring at screens. Now, I can't speak for, you know, how proactively that uh, that uh, individual was, was managing the traffic network, but it got me thinking that a lot of people might not realize the importance of having uh, people, especially as your agency gets bigger and as traffic gets worse and you have more needs, how much more responsive we can be as uh, as agencies if we do have remote control of uh, of our intersections, or at least the ability to get virtual eyes out on the street. Um, it really is the difference. You hear reactive and proactive when it comes to traffic uh, uh, managing your traffic network. And it is really important that if we do want to be proactive and anticipating problems before they they uh, they occur, and, and then being able to be quickly responsive to to needs as they arise. Um, tactics and having a central system uh, gives you a lot of that ability. So in terms of Western systems, here's a bit of a uh, territory uh, map for us of, of some of the locations that, uh, that we have central systems out um, uh, deployed. We've got uh, over 30 systems uh, encompassing over 4,000 intersections all the way up and down the West Coast and then trickling east into the uh, Idaho uh, Panhandle, Southern Idaho, and uh, and uh, definitely a lot of uh, Siemens users out there in Montana. So um, lots of uh, uh, case studies, um, references, people we can get you. If there's a situation that, uh, a unique situation that Tactics might be able to handle, there's a good chance we've got a customer out there who's experienced um, uh, similar issues. So why Tactics? 
tactics is scalable. So from small cities to large regions, um, we'll show you guys in some preceding uh, or some succeeding slides that uh, tactics is a modular system that that uh, works well for the agencies that just have a couple traffic signals that they're wanting to manage, but it's also scalable all the way up to to, to very large cities with thousands of intersections. Um, tactics has full support of uh, all the previous CPAC versions. Um, uh, database management. Uh, we'll let John uh, talk about database management a little bit, but the ability to compare to another controller or version, uh, parameter history and rollback, um, keep track of history, recover changes, those are all things you can do in tactics. Uh, one of the things that gets a lot of the, uh, um, uh, you know, a lot of the, the publicity in the tactics system is the, uh, the ability to have traffic control remotely. So, programming traffic responsive plans, quick response, um, changing traffic patterns by time of day. These are all things that uh, you can remotely handle at your fingertips. I talked a little bit about the modularity of the tactic system, but also the scalability. So tactics has five different uh, levels, so to speak. Um, uh, the, the Largest uh, tactics enterprise version is the full featured. This is uh, suitable for your very, very large cities. You know, your hundreds of thousands of intersections. Um, uh, tactics is uh, uh, normally uh, we charge based on the number of intersections. So depending on your needs, um, your territory manager or uh, technician can, can walk you through what tactics system fits you best. Um, traditionally, Tactics uh, resides on a server um, at your, uh, you know, within your uh, IT department, but we also have SmartGuard, which is a web-based traffic management uh, system. Uh, that's suitable for, for small and large systems, but uh, that's going to be a cloud-based uh, way to manage your traffic network. Tactics Central, uh, this is probably the most common, suitable for mid, uh, mid to large size cities. Um, Tactics Mark, so to support for field masters utilizing CMARC. So that's more of your, your closed loop system. If you just have a particular uh, part of the city you want to manage in a closed kind of environment, uh, that's where Marks comes in. And then Tactics View. I tell people that Tactics View costs about as much as a traffic signal controller. It's essentially a database management tool. It's, uh, it's suitable for uh, small agencies, low cost solution uh, that uh, consultants have seen a lot of benefit in as well. Tactics is easy to use. It's easy to monitor your system with an advanced overview uh, on the landing page. It's easy to see key information gathered in one place. In some of the future slides, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys uh, what the user interface looks like. It's, it's very simple with everything in one place, easy to find what you need, easy to filter through the information that you don't want to see. If, you, if anybody does want to dive in a little bit deeper, I encourage you guys, like I said, to reach out. Um, John is able to um, uh, Telnet or rather VPN into uh, his his traffic signal network and show you guys the dashboard. Uh, he can show you a little bit about uh, uh, the, um, the the search features that help you find devices easily, uh, standard filters to locate problem intersections, and uh, quick navigation uh, from list to map. So a lot of features that uh, that are really easy to use. Um, sometimes it just takes that first walkthrough to start getting a little bit more comfortable with it. So mapping capabilities. One of uh, the tactics claim to fame is uh, uh, all of the different map features. You've got your um, ability to drag and drop your intersections onto the maps. Uh, you've got open GIS mapping, so you can customize it uh, to your agency's specific needs. Um, and also your local intersection maps. John, do you want to walk us through a little bit of the, uh, um, the, the, the front screen here with the navigation notifications and list view, some of the capabilities here? We'll test John's okay. mic out here. So you have your intersections on your left. This is where you can add or delete intersections. Uh, then you have your primary list of intersections where you can see all the sub status menus that are going on, like what plan you're running, what mode your that plan is running, whether it's standby, time of day, pattern, any external modes. Uh, and what what zone that it's running in, and you can switch uh, you can switch intersections in zones by time of day. So you may have uh, one group of inter 
uh, of intersections running in a zone and but you want to better running coordination but you want to move one intersection out of that zone and move him into a free zone because maybe at lunch hour around that time you want that one particular intersection to run free instead of run cord so you can move intersections in and out of active zones by time of day authority what agency is controlling uh, your intersection. So you can have, within tactics, multiple agencies. So you may have a city, you may have a county agency, and then maybe the DOT. And you may all be sharing intersections along this, uh, within this tactic system. And each user can have different uh, privileges or access to those intersections. All and, and then things like IP address, communications, what's what's happening with your system. All of these submenus are all uh, customizable per user login. So you can have as many as you want or as little as you want. And and you can rearrange them in whatever order you want. And it's all saved per user login. Up at the top, you have action hop tabs. So if you were to click on, say, seven for OK, you would just see the seven intersections that are uh, that are uh, displaying OK. Uh, exception is when a intersection goes into transitions, usually from coordination. Operational failure could be that um, the intersection is running pattern or plan one 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 or pattern one, and tactics thinks it should be running free. So that could be an operational error. Also, operational error could be uh, the tactics knows the system should be running coordination pattern, but the intersection is currently under preemption. So that would be an operational error. Controller error would be something like uh, either the intersections in flash or you're utilizing system detectors to control traffic responsive groups. And those system detectors or one of those system detectors have, have failed, would also put uh, a controller error. Offline unknown, you can have as many intersections also within tactics that um, tactics is not communicating to, but you may have it there just for a database reference that you want to use. And then this last one back here is, is calm failure. So intersections online or is within the system. The system knows that it should be able to communicate to it, but it can't. It would list it as a calm failure. But all of these buttons are quick hot buttons that you can click on to see exactly those intersections that are in that group. And also filter, if you're like the city of Seattle with a thousand intersections on there, that's a lot of information to scroll through. So you just start typing in the name of your intersection and any part of that name will then sort through those intersections. How's that? <laughs> Thanks, John. Yes, so uh, within the sub menu, oh, go ahead, John. Oh no, that was it. All right. Within the within each of these controllers, you have the ability to uh, click on local status, pull reports for that particular intersection, pull up your local intersection map, or keep your intersection database. So again, as opposed to going out in the field and uh, and retrieving all of this with a uh, thumb drive or something like that or a data key, uh, you've got all of this at your fingertips. Uh, that's kind of one-click options here. Intersection status display. So I have my screen here. Intersection summary data, uh, phase data, so uh, your things like your splits, tiers, termination, reasons, your next phases, um, all available there in menu two. Uh, your three, phase input information. So you see your vehicle calls, your ped calls, your holds, your phase omits. So I'll show up there. Um, your communication status statistics. So uh, whether you're we're connected via fiber or radio or cellular, all of your communication statistics, uh, make sure all your controllers are talking to each other as they should. They're number four. Um, your navigation search bar, so your uh, pre-timer, uh, your, your statuses and your, your, your timers down there. And, uh, and then of course a map for, uh, for where exactly in your network it resides. So you can easily figure out um, uh, where that controller is at. You then have the option to see all of these things uh, from one screen, so one, one screen view, so you don't have to toggle back and forth and wait for it to load. Uh, you can bring up everything uh, in one view, so the intersection list, like John went over, intersection diagram, map overview, uh, the database of the network, and also a, uh, your, uh, you can get a view of the live intersection in operation. 
So one of the cool things about uh, about tactics is being able to connect from uh, from anywhere you're at, whether that's uh, at City Hall in the in the TNC, um, at your public workshop, or out in the field um, on uh, on your technician's laptops. Um, it's built up uh, so there's no limit to the number of users that can access tactics. So devices and features can be accessed. Uh, uh, controlled, as John mentioned, on a per user basis, you can control who has access. But if they're, if you are in a situation where you want your your technicians, uh, your field guys, your engineers, all to have access, there isn't uh, a, a limit. So uh, you've got the ability to connect uh, from the office, from the field, VPN, uh, cloud-based, as we mentioned, um, but also the ability to control the front panel uh, via tablet. So you can actually get in through tactics and make it look like you're looking at the front of that controller as if you're out there. So for some of these demonstrations that uh, you know Don will do remotely uh, on, on his laptop, you, he's staring uh, at, uh, at your controller on one side, but actually controlling it through tactics uh, uh, on the computer. So uh, pretty slick. Database capabilities. individual database, uh, databases, um, compare each of your databases from each other, um, compare just portions of them. Uh, any database changes you make are logged in timestamps. So if you want to go back and see some of the changes that uh, your other traffic engineer or one of the technicians made, uh, you can see when it was made and actually uh, read comments or notes that might have been added. And then uh, you can review historic changes. Uh, so when you want to see why exactly is this uh, operating like this, you can go back and look at the compare. John, do you have anything to add on the some of the compare features in the database? Sure, you can obviously, like Kai mentioned, compare what's in the database to what's on the controller. You can also do a CRC checksum, which you know when you save the data to your data key or USB, it creates a uh, a checksum value, but it's a quicker way of doing a time of day compare. You can do a CRC checksum value to see if any data has changed within your controller. It won't tell you what's changed, but it'll let you know that that value has changed. So you know that some value uh, has changed and then you can go and just run an, an all data compare uh, on your controller as opposed to doing a, a time of day compare, which, which um, if there's differences, we'll record all of those differences, but it takes up a little more space or memory if you're going to store that onto your server. So just another another option. In terms of your monitoring and your analysis capabilities, uh, uh, we can do over more than 150 predefined reports. So maybe you just want to pull up those uh, reports on a whim or you want to schedule to receive certain reports at certain times, uh, historical data, alerts, detector monitoring and reporting. So any detector issues that you might, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, SPMs, but in, uh, in essence, you're able to view uh, a, a detector status within tactics, uh, your time space diagrams and split monitors. Those are all available as, uh, as part of the uh, over 150 predefined reports. This is a graph that's showing you your split monitor and time space diagram tool. Uh, it's available within tactics. And then on the lower right, you can view your cycle timing in real time. So you want to actually see how it's looking and, uh, and kind of emulate having eyes out there on the actual light and see how traffic's running. So you can view what's happening uh, at individual intersections and individual controllers in real time. Uh, you can see it turn red, uh, run through the, uh, the, the phasing, view individual, and, uh, and then aggregate for performance of your entire system. So signal performance met, uh, metrics, um, uh, all of these are being uh, uh, collected with, within tactics and you have the ability to pull up uh, a number of different graphs that you can uh, bring the data back that's necessary to make empirical uh, traffic engineering decisions. So we'll talk about our Purdue coordination diagram, that's a term uh, many of you might have heard, but uh, essentially we want to see when vehicles are arriving, at what time uh, uh, within the phase our vehicles are uh, um, uh, arriving at the intersection. So by plotting that out, that's a good metric for telling how our traffic's moving. We want to reduce the number of vehicles that are arriving on, on red. And uh, to create that green band, we want to increase the number of vehicles that are that are uh, uh, flowing through from, from one intersection to the next. So you get your progression diagrams, your route time distribution, 
Uh, again, your, your arrivals on green and red are plotted in the lower left-hand corner. Um, your delay time, delay by movement, um, and then your travel time information. John, do you have a quick overview on some of the most common reports you see throughout our territory? 150 is quite a few of them, and I've listed off a couple of the, the, the ones that I thought were common here, but uh, we can add to that. Um, so, yeah, local alarms, comm faults. The MOE stands for measure of efficiency, so you can see what your um, how your coordination patterns have been running and what, what split values that you've been running. That's a good one detectors whether it's the volume the raw volume we also have system detectors that will do um, volume uh, count and occupancy uh, speed data you can set up uh, uh, two loops to do a, a speed trap to get an average speed through that through that zone uh, if you have ps2 the cmu monitor fault is neat so you can bring back your monitors and look at that uh, peak hour volume um, have the system detector reports are are neat. There's some um, we have some agencies that are some real power users on those reports, and they they use a, a lot of reports. Um, a, a lot of the reports now they used used to be um, done with crystal reports. Siemens is updating those to be done with HTML reports, so it's a fast report. Um, Definitely cleaner and uh, takes up less space. So uh, the cool thing about Tactics is that it's, uh, it's a modular system, as I mentioned, so you can scale it for exactly what you need. Maybe those 150 reports seems overwhelming, but maybe you're just going to want to focus on uh, just a certain subset uh, of data from your system. So it's configurable to receive alarms from anywhere. You can set up text. Uh, if certain events occur, uh, you can set up emails and send it uh, to whoever um, those those reports are uh, would be useful for. So maybe your technician is getting reports on on your detector failures, but uh, but um, more of your SPM type data reports are, are going through email to your traffic engineers who would be more uh, likely to use that. So we don't want to overwhelm you with that information, but we want to know want you to know that that information is available um, as you need it. System modules. So not only is that uh, Tactics kind of an umbrella system for uh, a lot of things you'll do uh, just intersection by intersection, it's a scalable system that has the ability to run uh, transit signal priority. Uh, concert, concert is, is essentially a module that uh, harmonizes a lot of, uh, of, of different third-party systems. So uh, for instance, Seattle uses, uses concert to push uh, messages, their dynamic message signs. So more of an umbrella overall system. Obviously, you've got tactics, uh, another module, Scoot. So a uh, big buzzword right now is uh, adaptive control systems, Scoot, uh, which stands for split cycle offset optimization technique. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, running with the, uh, you know, on the Siemens, Siemens based controllers, but it does uh, integrate well uh, with the tactic system. Uh, local adaptive. Um, so that's like your your peer to peer type networks uh, that, you, that you might set up for just a certain corridor. Um, it's optimized for connected vehicles. So again, another buzzword that's uh, growing in popularity a lot, uh, the deployment of RSUs for, um, for putting out safety messages to, to um, connected devices. Um, quick response, quick response is a way to, to program uh, your, your signals to operate in a certain way when certain events occur. So maybe you've got uh, a concert getting out or something that requires you to, uh, to react quickly. Well, it's not uh, feasible to go out in the field and make timing plan changes. Um, so with tactics, uh, you can you can program quick response to occur uh, remotely. Um, again, DMS and CCTV. So integrating with your your variable message signs, maybe your speed limit signs or your uh, full matrix type warning signs. Traffic responses. So another uh, you know maybe related to the idea of uh, of adaptive uh, signal control, but um, um, choosing your, your, your traffic patterns uh, automatically based on the volumes, and based on the, the best possible traffic pattern. That's, that's traffic responsive, which you can program through tactics. 
incident management. So this goes back to my, uh, my use case of somebody sitting there at the traffic management center at all times. Well, you've got these unexpected events that occur. You don't want to just be left at the whim of the, the current time of day plan in your controller. You want to be able to make uh, proactive or quickly reactive changes. Um, Tactics allows you to, to um, provide better incident management uh, remotely. Traffic responsive. John, I think you've implemented some of this. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, traffic responsive and some of the use cases there? Sure. So the cool thing about traffic responsive is uh, instead of um, just running coordination by our standard time of day plans, you know, at, at from 7 to 9 in the morning we run pattern 1 and from 11 to one we run pattern two and then our evening plan we run you know pattern three or or three one one you know from from three in the afternoon till six with traffic responsive we can set up system detectors that will measure the volume and occupancy of of our whatever mark arterials we want to set up we can do the main line plus side streets typically it's the main line and we can uh, depending on what that volume and occupancy is, um, dictate pre-selected plans based on that based on that volume and occupancy. So it's a great way to dynamically change your uh, coordination plans based off of true traffic volumes instead of just by time of day. Talked about quick response. Uh, John, I don't know if you've got any uh, use cases up and down the West Coast where quick response, but I use the example of a concert getting out or a, a, you know, a, a ferry arrival or something like that. Go ahead, John. That, that is true. Seattle, they have uh, around the, uh, their stadiums there, they have a, a call box where an officer can hit a button and it'll do a flush pattern. The cool thing about Quick response is that it can broadcast a pattern and change signals over multiple zones. Or normally, um, um, like a traffic response of you're just dealing with a set of intersections within one zone. With quick response, you can you can control multiple intersections across multiple zones. So across your whole your whole city or territory, really. And, and it can be done with system loops. It can be a manual trigger. You could have a button inside your, your office that if it's a tsunami warning or something, uh, an operator could hit, hit that button and, and do some kind of flush pattern to exit traffic out of the city and into a safer area. Or like Kai mentioned, City of Seattle, when their uh, ferry boats come in, they have an operator that hits a button that, that does the flash pattern to get those, you know, four or 500 cars out of that out of that dock area as quickly as possible and and into the into the city so again powerful flexible and responsive um you know i, I don't know how many of you guys tapped into our peer-to-peer -peer webinar uh, last week uh, if you haven't uh, it's, it's available to view on our website but essentially the ability to say okay this, here's a situation where we want um, uh, to omit a phase here uh, when, when, when this phase is green or we want to be able to flush vehicles around um, uh, you know through through a major corridor because we know that traffic at this time of day always moves this direction well a lot of that is that uh, you know field uh, we were showing you guys the ability to do that out in the field well the reality of it is is that, um, if you want to don't want to be out there doing that in, in, in bad weather and you want to be able to make changes remotely without uh, you know costly calls to get uh, text out there and uh, intersection control things like that um, you can do those things remotely so uh, events triggers trigger inputs responsive think about it as a way to um, do all of those things from the comfort of your home smart card uh, cloud-based software um, it's a simple and easy to use interface that uh, essentially gives you a, a light version of what you're going to get with tactics, but this is for people who, who want a cloud-based solution. So instead of uh, uh, installing a tactic server, uh, maybe there's concerns about space, concerns about real estate, uh, uh, you know, within your IT department, uh, this gives you the ability to, on your tech tablets or phones or, or, or field laptops, um, see, the, see the health of your intersection in a, in a couple easy to, uh, 
easy to use screens. More thing, Western and uh, Siemens 360 support. So uh, uh, Western uses uh, the 360 support package uh, as a way to um, um, keep uh, keep our customers up to date uh, with all of the latest uh, patches, uh, upgrades uh, as they become available. So this is your assurance that uh, that uh, you're not going to run out of sync with your your tactics and your and your CPAC software. This uh, uh, will make sure that uh, your CPAC and your tactics are are compatible. Um, it's not always the case that you're upgrading. You don't want to upgrade every single intersection every time you uh, uh, have an update to to tactics, but uh, but uh, your Siemens 360 uh, platform is, is kind of our, our service agreement with you guys. We're gonna make sure your system uh, is healthy and that uh, you get all of the uh, updates as they come out. So typically uh, uh, we'll do this on an annual or, or biannual basis. And uh, every time there's an update, uh, one of the technicians will go out and, uh, and provide you guys uh, the support needed to make sure you're running uh, the latest, uh, latest and greatest in Siemens uh, uh, software. And that's everything we've got for uh, for kind of the slide deck. Uh, we kind of uh, turn it over to uh, Connor. I don't know if we've had any questions come up yet, uh, or if anybody wants us to dive in a little bit deeper. Um, John might be able to uh, uh, go into a couple more topics uh, if people want to. Uh, and if not, uh, I appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, Kai. Um, we'll get going on the Q and A process. So if you have questions, uh, now's the time. Feel free to use the the chat feature there within the GoToWebinar toolbar, and um, we'll get to your questions. Uh, we had a few come in uh, during the presentation. So first one is, uh, can we get a free demo of tactics? So I, I'll I'll take that one, John. And um, let's see. So so as I mentioned, all of our technicians and, and and all of our salespeople have access to tactics on on our laptops. So we'd be happy to uh, give you guys a high level overview. Um, one of the things that I've mentioned at the at the shop we have is a, a fully operational traffic management center that uh, John and his team have VPN access to. So uh, we're happy to give you a demo in in um, in that way. Uh, any of the features you guys might want to see. But uh, another thing that we've been known to do is. Uh, you guys saw the map of our deployments of uh, Siemens systems uh, throughout uh, throughout our territory. One of the best ways to see this is to we'll uh, arrange to take you out to a city that's uh, successfully using um, um, kind of our Siemens systems and and kind of seeing is believing type of thing. And you can uh, ask questions right from the people who are uh, who are managing the network on their own. So whatever makes most sense for your situation, yes, we're happy to uh, give a give a free demo. Next question, do you have directions available with phase numbers on timing charts? <laughs> so, you're laughing, John, I'll let you take that one. <laughs> there's, um, well, let's see. Uh, on our, on our, on the timing sheet, there's, there's been the request to add a, a box or a spot where you can, uh, Set the, you know, you have phase one and you'd like to be able to have a pull down menu and say this is, you know, northbound left turn or or, or something like that. And currently um, that request is in. It's it's not currently available, but uh, uh, it may hopefully be coming out uh, this summer in the next release of Tactics, which will be version 5.3. So that that is. And when we do our user groups or things like this, uh, those requests that customers have, we push those to Siemens. And that's what helps make the software better and more uh, user friendly is, is, is we do take those, um, uh, those comments and requests seriously. And we, we do pass those on to Siemens. And, uh, and uh, most of the time those, you know, they do get into the software. So, and that is a big one that we've had that one a lot before. Great. Looks like the last question here. How many users uh, can can be on Tactics? Well, when uh, when you get uh, when you buy your system, it comes with so many user licenses. So it may be uh, like five or ten users. That's actually referencing how many computers you can have Tactics on. 
but if you have one of those set up as a uh, an RDP server or a remote desktop server that multiple people can log into, in Tactics you can set up as many users as as you want. It's unlimited, basically, how many users can be um, put into Tactics to be able to access the system. The only limitation you might have license-wise is how many computers it's running on. But you can buy as many licenses as as you want for 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 tactics, so uh, users are are actually uh, unlimited. Great, looks like uh, all the questions we got today. Thanks, Kai. Thanks, John, and thank you everyone for attending today's presentation. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.